Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world tonight. This is Grant Cameron, and I want to welcome you back to another uh, episode. We have a unique guest today. Uh, we have uh, my guest is Connor Stevens from Orange County, California. And I said I would link him up with uh, Jimmy Church down in that area there because Jimmy's into music. Uh, we got him, he's a musician today, and um, he was uh, sent to me by his mother, Carmen, who apparently watches all my YouTube stuff. And um, Connor is 18 years old, and he's putting out an album. The album is called Welcome to Life. It's his first album. He's been doing songs, apparently, since he was 16 years old. He's done 100 songs. And the lyrics that are in these songs are a little bit different than the ordinary lyrics you'll hear and uh, so I said, let's get him on here because um, I'm very interested in the questions I want to ask are um, where the inspiration for music, because I've pointed out I've got um, I wrote a book called um, Tuned In the Paranormal World of Music and Connor apparently has the book. And um, I was not interested in music, but I was very interested in uh, I got a message from a famous experiencer by the name of Chris Bledsoe. And Chris told me um, that um, I should uh, listen to music. It was a message from the guardians, was the beings that he was, he was dealing with. And the message was that the message is in the music. And at that point, I told him, I said, well, I think you're kind of wasting your time because I'm not into music. My whole family's musical. I'm not musical. I don't listen to music, all this kind of stuff. And um, so I got into the, the music thing because Neil Young, was one of the people that he told me to listen to. And Neil Young grew up in my city. And I thought that synchronicity was too big to uh, overlook. So I ended up writing the book. And so today we have Connor on. We're going to talk about his music. I'm going to play a couple of his songs. And we're going to provide the links to all his material. And uh, if you see what he provided us, I mean, this guy has media down. Uh, every link to every uh, um, media outlet or, you know, a media, whatever they call it that there is. And I'm joined today also by my assistant, Nicole Sackage. How you doing, Nicole? Doing well, Grant. Glad to be here. Yeah, super. And and today today is um, kind of a, a unique day. Today is uh, Connor's first interview. And uh, it was, uh, I believe, March the 20th of last year that uh, you did your first interview with me. Is that correct? I think so. There it's you go. So you. it's a year ago today. That's pretty uh, pretty synchronistic, don't you think? I like it, you know, 320 last year, 2020, 20 for me. So I couldn't forget that one. There Triple twenties. <laughs> and and yet you haven't you haven't released the interview yet. You're you're covering up. Is that true? Um, I've put it in the vault. I've taken uh, cues from you. You have to keep some secrets in some hidden UFO vault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> And stir up controversy. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. There you go. Now I'll release it sometime soon. No, I think it'll be good. And uh, now that it's been long enough that, you know, I'm not afraid of looking like a dork or anything. So <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm over it. Yeah, you, but, you, you've got your YouTube. Have you got a YouTube channel, Connor? I do. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, We're going to pull a little there. links in there for you, all that kind of stuff. So, because yeah. um, I helped um, uh, Nicole sort of build up her YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and she's sort of off and running now, and we do some interviews. This is uh, We've done a whole series on music. I don't know if you've seen Nicole's YouTube channel. We did a whole series on music. There's a connection between music and, right. and UFOs. What do you think, Nicole, let me ask you first. What do you think the connection between UFOs and music is? Why are there so many musicians that are seem to be into uh, UFOs and the paranormal? You know, um, keeping on par with our series, ufology, art, and music, and now that we're starting to get into the music, the, the pattern I think that is emerging for me is obviously artists and creative people can tap into the field maybe more easily than other people can. They're more susceptible. But when it shakes down to the music side, this is where I think, you know, like you said, the message is in the music, follow the music. I think music is the best art form to 
cross generations and lead from generation to generation to generation. You know, I mean, I listen to the music my mom loved when she was younger. I think it's cool now. I still like mute modern pop music now. And hopefully 20 years from now, that music will still be carrying a message. And I think that's, that's the gemstone, I think along with all the other creativity and inspiration, but I think that's the gemstone. It, it can cross multiple decades and still be relevant. Yeah, let's go to Connor. Uh, give me your uh, background. Um, how, how did you get into music? And uh, if you've seen the, the book, I always talk about the fact that, you know, most musicians, really good musicians can't read or write music. So t tell us how you got into the music field and and uh, what led you to uh, do as many songs as you've done right now? Well, honestly, I just started uh, playing the guitar when I was 12. Um, you know, my parents bought me a electric guitar and from Amazon, it was only like, I don't know, probably like a hundred bucks. Wow. And then, um, and so my mom got me lessons to this guy named Roly Ulug, and I've been doing that ever since. Uh, ever since I was twelve till now. Uh, now he's my producer and records all my music, and um, that's how I made this album, Welcome to Life. And so I started writing music when I was. Um, 16 it just i don't know it kind of just came to me i just started writing and it, i don't know <laughs> um now can i jump in real quick and just yeah. ask you a question when you were 12 and you first started taking guitar lessons did you find that it came easily to you and almost kind of naturally and i think uh, maybe your mom mentioned to us via email that you don't truly read music when you do, but you can almost pick up in, any instrument and play now. So if you, that could give you a venue to explain. <laughs> well, no, I can't read music. Mm -hmm. I can barely read uh, tabs, guitar tabs mm -hmm. and um and the music theory my knowledge for that is very limited right and all my songs that i all the chords that i use is very basic chords mm -hmm. and but somehow they all sound different <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so and when you were been... when you were 16 and started writing for yourself was that um would the music come to you and you would write lyrics or would, or the opposite? Would you have some lyrics that were maybe inspiring and then you would set it to a tune? It all just comes at the same time, really. Oh, I, wow. I just um, play, well, like I, I try to find like a chord progression that sounds somewhat unique mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of bands and artists use like a chord progression and it like sounds similar and very um it's not all that special <laughs> but yeah. uh so yeah I find a chord progression that sounds somewhat unique and then and then I just start singing like random words mm. and then um and then I st eventually started to write. What was the, what was the first song you did? Sounds, huh? What was the first song you did? First song was back in August 2019. It's called Not Enough. And and what yeah. led to it? Like, what, how did that, can you tell me the, the experience of suddenly deciding you're going to do a, a, a song? I just decided to do it. It's just, I... For for that song, for that chord progression, I always like mess with that. Um, those chords that I play in that song, and 
And so, again, it just came to me. I just wanted to write. And I wrote this song. And my mom was like, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So tell, tell me a little bit more about your producer. How, do, how does music done today? Because, you know, we have, it's different than when I grew up where, you know, you put out a record and, and you get promoted on radio and stuff like that. How does it, how does it work now, like with this album and your producer, uh, how does anybody like make music or how do you get sort of popular in the f music field today? And why did he pick you? He was my music teacher. Okay. And I asked him because I found out he's a producer. <laughs> oh, okay. And I asked him, it's like, I have all these songs from like record. And then, but uh, how it's recorded is by a computer. He uses this program called Cakewalk, and it's, it's very complex, but yeah. It's not a cakewalk? What? <laughs> <laughs> no. Too misleading. How, how long would you say it takes you to compose a song uh, when it does come to you from, you know, from the time it comes to you till you're happy with it and you've mixed it? Well, writing the song, it takes, for like every song, it takes like 30 to an hour. Yeah. And that's fast. <laughs> yeah. And that's like the whole song. And then, but like through time, the song kind of changes because, you know, it progresses. Mm -hmm. And to like record the song in like a studio is like four to five hours. And, that includes all the mixing and mastering. Wow. So you're actually in a studio producing your, your record album. And why is there a certain date? What happens on the date when the, tell me when the album's coming out and why a certain date or what happens when that album is out? Um, so I announce a date on like my social media. Okay. And it's always on a Friday because that's apparently how the industry works. New wow. Music Friday. There you go. And so for my album, I scheduled uh, three singles and then the album. So three singles, so like one singular song. I released one last Friday and yesterday, actually. And then next Friday. So I do a lot of social media, a lot of posting on there to let people know, like, Listen to it. <laughs> wow. So you, that that's what I noticed when I saw all the, the links that you had, that you seem to be quite an expert at setting all this stuff up and the social media uh, stuff. Yeah. Okay, we're going to play one of your songs. Is that okay? Are you got another question to call? No, I'm I'm good for right now. I'd love to play one. Okay, so I'm going to play part of, the part of the one song about 2020. You can give me a sort of a background. But first, I need to ask you, are you... In school, it used to be in, in our day, uh, uh, if you were uh, a, a musical guy, had a band and stuff, you were a, a chick magnet. Are you a chick magnet? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no. I just need to know. That's usually, usually that, in our day, that's the way it worked. It doesn't work anymore, I guess. Like, Okay, hang on. Let me uh, take over the screen here. And let me share screen. Share sound. Tell me a little bit about the song. We're gonna play this uh, 2020 song, I think, first. Yeah. Okay. So give me a little bit of background on it while I go to the. Uh... Um. Well, I wrote it last year in June, like at the beginning of June. It was around the time where you know, the Black Lives Matter and the, all the protests and riots went on. And so I like I saw people's reaction to that, and I was like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it kind of inspired me to write, to like, you know, stop fighting, <laughs> basically. Good for you. Good for yeah. you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So that, that'll be good. So that this is the, this will be the first, the first song and your songs are um, the, the tempo and stuff are completely different in the two songs that I'm going to play, but here we go with the first and we'll go through the, the first part of the song and then we can uh, get some comments on it. Hopefully this works here. We've got the lyrics here. <laughs> Oh, we 
that and we'll go to the next sign it let me get out of the share screen so you you said the the uh writing was inspired that that song yeah and then the song just fell from the sky wow grant you cut it off at my favorite part there's oh, you, like you a nice little that. guitar solo right there <laughs> wow. <laughs> well maybe we can... <laughs> i did like that part i'm like yeah oh but yeah, tell us. And well, then I think it... that's kind of perfect to like what I said, like this upheaval of the protests of last spring and Black Lives Matter, you know, and for you to put it, how it inspired you into music and that message, you know, is going to carry on for generations. So yeah, definitely. And definitely. <laughs> you said it came, were you, uh, watching the protests or did something happen in your town were you a part of it anyway or was this your contribution <laughs> it was just everywhere like there's protests everywhere and i saw all over social media and i was just seeing like people's reaction to what they don't like it kind of kind of sad <laughs> and and so I was just shocked at how everyone was acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that song again only took a little while to to put out or to uh, uh, compose. Yeah, I wrote this song in like the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, that was my next question. Okay, go through that, and then I got a question for you. Tell yeah. me the the what happened there. I. Well. I wrote the song in the middle of the night, but like, I don't know, it just sort of like came to me, fell from the sky. Wow. Were you all. awake I don't know or were you already awake or had you fallen asleep and you woke up and it no, was, I was, I was Yeah. Yeah. Have you had any dream songs? A lot of people get the dream songs. No, I don't. I never had those. Wow. But it did come very quickly. And, and what, what, do, what is um, your generation, I mean, how do you see this, um, the world, like in the United States right now? Are you optimistic about what's going on? Because that, that's, I guess, the main thing that interested me about your stuff is that the lyrics and your, your songs are, like your mother pointed out, and I should point out your mother's name is Carmen, and that is where I had my first sighting. That's where it all started for me, in a town called Carmen, Manitoba, yeah. in Canada. So uh do you, do you are you optimistic for the way the world is going or do you think that we're in some trouble we're in trouble i think but there's hope always you're part of the hope i think in terms of putting the song yeah because that was the idea that that you you is the way i put it is when people are um looking for a message when you're 25 years old nobody you don't you got all your ideas set already it's between your time and your 10 and 20, 25 years old that people are looking for a new message or looking to be something in the world and the people they look up to are the musicians so i think you've got an important role in terms of trying to change the 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 conversation and and put a proper message out there for your generation to follow yeah definitely songs mean a lot to me <laughs> and so you you let's talk a little bit about your lyrics are most of your lyrics about these these kind of issues social issues and stuff like that yeah, I tend to write about other stuff. Well, I write about myself, I guess, too, but mostly about what's going on in the world and especially in our country. And yeah, it's pretty much it. 
Wow. Yeah. Cause I'm pretty impressed. So you, you're not old enough to have had uh, ex-girlfriends or something where you have to write about breakups and stuff like that. Which, <laughs> no. In, in my day it was the no. Beatles. That's where a lot of that stuff was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's impressive, impressive lyrics. So let's maybe go to the second song and this one, I think we're going to play right through here. And this is the song, which I've already forgotten the name. Okay. Share, share, share. Okay. So give me a little background on this here. If we get the screen. Come on. Okay. It's all for a reason. Give me a little bit of background on this song. Well, I wrote this in my backyard. Wow. And that was about the only time I wrote a song in my backyard. And I always write, I don't write very uh, happy songs most of the time. <laughs> so I want to write like a happy song. So, and yeah, this, better this was, place to write in my backyard. Beautiful. And this again, it only took a few minutes to do? This probably put, took like 30 minutes Wow. at the most. Okay, yeah. let's go through it here.
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, wait, I think they do cell phones now at concerts. Everybody holds up their cell phones instead of lighters. So. <laughs> that, that'll be a hit. I like that one. That's that's pretty good. And Grant, I was going to ask you, because you get all like tingly when you hear experience or music, like you can spot it, you know, or sense it. Do you, does it get you all tingly like that? Yeah, first <laughs> time I heard it, it, it didn't. This time it did. I, I sort of caught yeah. it. it and it does have that 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 what you and I and experiencers always talk about all the time is this idea. I even did a, a an interview on this one time. It's all for a reason we don't know. We actually mm -hmm. did a um, if you if you I don't know if it's up yet, but we did a a show with three people. One was a woman who had a near death experience, was thrown off a motorcycle face first into the concrete. Another one was a guy who did float tanks in L.A. Actually, a friend of mine, Mark, in L.A. Uh, get these messages in a float tank. And the other one was a woman in Alberta, Canada who's a um, sort of a, a, a hypnosis type person doing regressions and stuff like that, who was reading a book. And it was all this, I, this that's exactly what it was all about is uh, everything's perfect. Everything's going along. It's all happening for a reason. And we don't know. So I'm, I'm very impressed with the lyrics. And uh, right. I, I think this guy's tapped into something here and I'm, I'm really impressed and I'll do whatever I can to uh, sort of promote you. Uh, Cause I think uh, the UFO community, the, the weird community will, will love the lyrics of the stuff that you're 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 putting out there which leads to the question we talked a little bit before show before nicole came in about um your mother watches my channel and i i have a weird channel i, I do get into the music inspiration and consciousness and all that kind of stuff uh but let's go into the uh, the weird stuff your uh, experiences you said uh, a little bit before that you may have had some sort of experience when you were much younger or that that this is not totally unknown to you, what the kind of weird stuff we talk about? Uh, a sighting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so I was in the front of my house. Okay. And um, how old were you? It's probably like nine or ten maybe and you know i used to play baseball and so i was playing by myself baseball and um yeah i like to hit the ball and stuff and i was playing and i look i haven't looked up in the sky like straight ahead and i don't know it was weird i saw this black space craft whatever you want to call it just sort of just fly away i don't know where it went but this is during the day it was like, like evening. evening yeah i'm picturing when i play outside it was always the evening yeah. you know and, and, and the shape any shape the shape to it was it was like kind of like what is that one spacecraft in Star Wars? The, the Millennium Falcon? Millennium? <laughs> yes. So you would say it was kind of curved and maybe yeah. had a definite front to it. I think maybe sort of like an egg shape with a point. Is that what? Yeah. Or was it, was Probably there lights on the craft or was it just a craft? It's just a craft. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And your mother's and, had, had experiences? No, she hasn't. No. Okay. No. Do, you, do you think that may have had something to do with uh, where you are now? in Because a lot of experiences, if you look at the book, you'll see a lot of um, guys and girls um, have these sort of experiences and suddenly they're into it. And you seem to remember the exact point and the exact time when it happened. And that's usually the thing is people know exactly what month it was, what time of the day it was, exactly what it looked like. And, and yet it really wasn't anything, but it's still stuck in the, in the back of their mind. Yeah. I, I just saw it. It was like, I, I barely, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Did you tell anybody that you saw it? Um, told my mom. Yeah. Then how did she react? 
she was uh, making me draw these sketches of what it looked like. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Good mom. My yeah. mom was like, oh, my friend saw something weird once and then just carried on. <laughs> so yeah. It's a mom reaction. <laughs> That's yeah. great, though. And did you keep the sketches by chance or did your mom? <laughs> uh, I think my mom still has it. Oh, wow. That would be fun yeah. to see sometime. <laughs> Maybe next time for part two when you're all rich and famous and a pop star around the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's the future hold for you? You're, you're, you're talking about your albums coming out and you're going to college um, coming up. What, mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you see? What do you like to do if, if it all sort of works out well? Uh, well, I like to have a band <laughs> and just uh perform and make more albums wow. i already have albums planned out more wow you got you got how many songs you said 100 songs yeah probably somewhere around there wow, wow. that's impressive right yeah anything you want to add here nicole no, just in that last song, I I love the part where all the different instruments kind of crescendo along and it it's it almost feels spiraling, you know, but I love that <laughs> crescendo. I wanted to to say that part. Yeah. Thank do, you. Do you do you play a lot like the 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 solo guitar type stuff? Because it was pretty impressive in this one and I cut the other one off, which I apologize for, but do you usually do that in each song where you have sort of a uh, a solo for yeah uh i do i did most of the solos except for that one there's no way i can play like that but um, <laughs> you say that you're not supposed to say that <laughs> <laughs> um my producer actually did that solo it was my idea but i told him well uh, no i mean come up with the solo. that's wonderful though that you can collaborate within that inspiration though. I mean, that's what another beautiful thing about making music is, is that it yeah, brings yeah. people together in that way. You know, there's mm -hmm. not very many one man bands out there anymore, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. Well, it's, it's been an honor and a, a pleasure to talk to you, especially if you do become famous you, this is where it all started for you. And I'll do what I can. I've got a number of people that um, do shows on music and are into music and stuff. And we'll we'll do what we can to get you on um, the 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 circuit and to uh, add your not only your good music because even with this uh, this um, addition that you had your producer play, it fit in exactly with with what you were doing. It was it yeah. was it was impressive stuff. So. Uh, whatever we I can do and whatever Nicole can do, we will uh, set it out for you and um, uh, try to try to get you down the road and help you where you can. And I appreciate your coming on and and uh, actually being open to an interview and uh, good luck with your album. And uh, when I'm in L.A., I'm usually in L.A. a couple times a year. Maybe we'll give you a call and we'll uh, take you out for dinner and we'll see how it's going. Thank you. Like Thank you for the opportunity. OK, and I'll make <laughs> I'll make sure, make sure my friend Jimmy Church down there in L.A., gets in touch with you you're yeah. calling out jimmy church so no, so jimmy church <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he listens to jimmy church too he knows who jimmy church is so yep. jimmy owes him one <laughs> so you you do listen to podcasts like ufo type stuff from time to time yeah or, yeah yeah well Impressive. before you sneak off then uh just an overview of the ufology situation what do you think do you think disclosure is happening from the government or do you think it's going to come from experiencers in the community i think it's going to come from everyone nice but i think and do you think our uh the phenomenon is good or bad evil people eaters What's your take on that? <laughs> I think there's good. It's also not so nice. And kind of like us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the bad guys like us. Yeah. Beautiful. Us humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you, Grant. Thank yeah. you, Thank Connor. you, Nicole. And wonderful. thank you.
and say thanks thanks to your mother and thank you for watching my channel and uh yeah uh thanks for reaching out and uh once again i, I wish you all the best and uh i will do whatever i can to promote you and good luck with your album thank you all right i'm clear